Hi guys and welcome to another pick a card reading. Today's reading, sorry my phone's already going off. <laughs> Today's reading is going to be um, what is your karmic cycle and how do you break free of it? I think this is a really good one. I took it from the community board and um, I've kind of amended it slightly. Um, but yeah, really good idea. First of all, well done. Well done for watching it. Well done for um, prioritizing your well-being and your health and your growth and all of these things. I think sometimes you can become so used to it and so accustomed to it that you don't even realize how difficult it is because you're just used to doing it right you're used to living your life this way so well done for prioritizing yourself and for taking accountability for getting yourself out of these types of cycles karma what is karma karma is basically a reaction it's a consequence to how you're presenting yourself what you're putting out into the world sometimes it can be something that you um have embedded within you from childhood right it's something that you've taken on board it's part of your belief system it's something that you've seen other people do from a young age and so you've kind of repeated that as you've gotten older and that's not always the healthiest thing right but karma it does get a bad rep and it doesn't need to because ultimately karma is the very thing that creates such big transformation in our lives and um Unfortunately, some people sustain it. It's not really meant to be sustainable. It's something that's supposed to come in to your life to show you what needs to change so that you can work through it and create that change. But a lot of people settle there. They stay there. They get comfortable there. They get comfortable with how predictable it is. Karma is a bit like a, karmic cycles are a bit like a carousel, right? And when you word it like that, it doesn't even sound too bad, right? A carousel doesn't sound too bad. But when you actually think about it, being on a carousel, it's fun the first few times, but eventually you get bored at looking at the same scenery time and time again, as you go round and round in circles, you get tired of looking at the same tree, the same house, and eventually it becomes predictable. It becomes very boring. I'm so sorry about my phone. I'm going to turn it off because it's annoying me. So... The difference is on a carousel you can just jump right off whereas with a karmic cycle it takes a little bit more work but worth it in the end if it means that you get to create a different scenery for yourself right so we've got three pals to choose from today one is already jumping out at me <laughs> we've got bronze silver and gold so i'm just going to hold them there a minute and then you pick one pick which one most resonates with you and just bear in mind it's a general reading guys as well so it won't resonate for everyone. Okay, if you need more time, just pause the video. And I'm gonna start with bronze. So if you chose bronze, what is your karmic cycle and how do you break free of it? Okay, so <laughs> I feel like this is my spiritual pile um my spiritual lot all of you obviously have an interest in it otherwise you wouldn't be watching these types of readings but i really feel like you guys have um a very prominent spiritual side to you whether you realize that or not at this point it is there and some of you don't know the extent of it at this point and i think this is part of your karmic cycle this is the pile of people that tend to underestimate themselves their own abilities you might be very critical of yourselves and this is part of your karmic cycle. It's very much to do with your relationship with yourself. This is a karmic cycle that you're stuck in right now. You got dolphin, right? This is my favorite card in this deck and you've got the nine of swords in reverse, right? So dolphin is a lovely card it's a very spiritual card it's you know do dolphins are kind of known for their intelligence they're known for being very in tune um and i feel like some of you guys are but the reason why it's shown up as part of your karmic cycle is because i don't think you recognize your own intelligence you don't recognize your own spiritual abilities or what you could do with them your healing abilities you don't see the extent of it and i think 
it's slowing you down. I think that it might even scare you. I think some of you are scared of your own power or you're scared of your own abilities or scared of testing them out because of what might happen if you fail or what might happen if it goes wrong. Um, and so I think you guys have a tendency to hold yourselves back massively out of fear of what other people might think, fear of it going wrong, fear of um, seeing what you're made of. Again, see, it's almost like you're afraid of claiming your own power, claiming your own abilities because of what that might do to your life, what that might do to the people around you, how people may view you as a result of that. I think I'm sensing that some of you really hold yourself back when you're around other people. You don't actually allow yourself to show other people who you really are or what you're really thinking, feeling in that moment. You really kind of, you, you're very reserved in that sense. It's almost like you blend in or you try to blend in. It might be unconscious. You might not even know you do this, but I feel like you you sort of try to blend in so that you don't stand out. But the truth is, is that you're meant to stand out. You have all these colors to you that other people aren't seeing because you're hiding them away, because you're afraid of them yourself. It's almost like, how can you show other people that your colors if you haven't even embraced those colors yourself? You haven't even accepted that they are a part of you. That has to come first, right? You have to accept that is who you are first before you can show other people that's who you are. And I feel like um, you haven't fully, again, you haven't fully embraced your own power and your own abilities yet. And this is part of your karmic cycle. I think anytime you get close, to stepping over that line into what you're truly made of and what you're truly capable of, I think you start shying away from it. I think that you have drawn a line and limited yourself in some sort of a way. It's like you've drawn a line of what you're comfortable with, what you're comfortable with doing, what you're comfortable with having, what you're comfortable showing. And I think every time you get close to that line, you retreat almost like waves, right? The ebb and flow and ebb and flow. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's a natural part of life, but I feel like it's turned into a karmic cycle because you're never quite getting past that line. You're never quite getting past that point of what you're made of and what you're capable of. And it's because of what you're telling yourself, your thoughts. I think your thoughts like to convince you that you're only supposed to have so much in life, that you're only supposed to experience so much in life, that that's all that was meant for you and there's nothing more for you out there or that you couldn't possibly be the type of person to have a certain experience or to be able to accomplish something specific. It's almost like you look at other people as though that's what they are supposed to have, but it's not for you. It's not what you're supposed to have for yourself. And that's not the case. It's something that your mind is telling you out of fear of your own capabilities and your own power. Um, isn't it interesting as well that you chose bronze? And obviously, if we're talking about medals or accomplishments, it goes bronze, silver, gold. So you may always see yourself in third place. You may always see yourself as someone that's average, someone that um, doesn't stand out, someone that isn't meant to win gold, right? Someone that isn't supposed to be on top in some kind of way. But again, this is none of this is true. And in fact, it's all stemming from maybe experiences that you've had in the past, you know, something that you've, some something that's deeply embedded within you that's telling you, you are not meant to achieve much in life. You're not meant to stand out from the crowd. You're meant to blend in. Um, and again, it's it's very much something that is not true because you do shine bright. I think it's very natural for you to shine bright. You have such a great energy that I think so many, if it was on show, so many people would be attracted to it because it's so caring and nurturing and intelligent, but very humble at the same time. It's very humble at the same time. And I think that it's almost like 
your ability to be humble has more become a restriction for you because you won't let yourself shine. You won't let yourself shine. You, you're keeping yourself in that tower, right? You see how this guy is in a tower? You're keeping yourself in a tower locked away um, from the world. It's like you're not allowing yourself to just show people what you're made of. Um, and I think it's because you're afraid of your own power. Now, the effect that it's having on you is escapist and longing. It's interesting. Again, I see you as someone who's running away a lot, running away from your own strengths, your own abilities, running away from maybe even your own sort of destiny, what you're made for, what you're here to do. I feel like you're only comfortable with so much that you have to offer. You've got this power that's, it's really, it's been suppressed within you and you keep putting it there. You keep pushing your own power down and only letting a little bit of it out, only letting so much of it out that you're comfortable with and suppressing the rest. And every time, again, every time you get put in positions where you could shine or where your power could be um, useful to you, you run away from it. You run away from it. Um, yeah, and then we've got longing here as well. So this is a result of, of the running away because there's always a part of you that wants more than what you have. And the reason for that is because you won't allow yourself to have more because of the beliefs that you have about who you are as a person and what you're here for and what you're capable of. Again, that bronze medal, third place. You you may have this, this doubt of yourself that, again, you're only capable of so much or that um, gold place is meant for other people but not for you you're only capable of so much. You've Again, it's limitations you've set on yourself that may have come from other people in the past, things that people have told you that have always stuck with you, um, that you have started to believe yourself. It's become part of your belief system. But the problem is, is that it's making you always want more for yourself. It's like you may daydream a lot or fantasize a lot about what you could have, about what your life could look like, but for you, it may always just feel like a dream. It may always just feel like a fantasy, but not something you're ever really going to achieve. Um, and then escapist. So you kind of, you may physically run away a lot as well. You may physically um, distance yourself from people or you may travel a lot. You may move around a lot. And this is just a physical manifestation of, running, of you running away from your own power, you running away from living a life that... I feel like some of you, okay, sorry, I'm just getting another thought here. Some of you may run away from building or deepening relationships with people. So you may physically run away from people when it reaches a certain point. Um, even though you long to be seen, understood, valued on a deeper level, every time things get to that point, you run away from it. It scares you. Um, and so you won't let people see who you really are. So if it's not based on career, if it's not based on your capabilities, it's based on relationships. And I think you won't let people see who you really are. People only get to see so much of you before you shut the door on them, before you run away, before... And running away doesn't always have to look like running away, right? That's why some people don't even know they're doing it. Running away can be very subtle. It can just be you reserving things that you want to say to someone. It can be you, you know, again, throat chakra issues. It may be you preventing yourself from speaking up about things that you really want to say out loud. It can be you um, choosing to stay in when people invite you out somewhere, you know? It's, running away can look like a lot of different circumstances, but I feel like you, you do have this tendency to do this because you won't let people see the real you. 
because you're afraid of the real you. I think you haven't fully embraced yourself and who you are yet or what you're really here to do. And until you've done that, it's gonna be very difficult for you to show everyone else this or for you to present this to the world. And um, it's, it's like you need to get comfortable with your own power. I keep coming back to this, but you need to get comfortable with your own power and your own abilities. You have them for a reason, it's there for a reason. It's not there to be hidden away. You're not supposed to be hidden away. You're supposed to be presented to the world. And I feel like you need to accept that within yourself first before you try and allow yourself to do this. Because at the minute you are definitely stuck in a loop of, you know, testing the waters, only going so far and then running away from it before it really has the chance to... For example, if you've met someone new, you get to know them, you get to a certain point where it starts to scare you because they're starting to see the real version of you and then you run away and then you go through that process all over again with someone else. Um, or it's a circumstance in your life, you know, opportunities become available to you but you only allow yourself to um, accept the ones that keep you in your comfort zone, right? And you kind of run away from the rest. So how do you break free of this cycle then? Well, <laughs> communication, talking about throat chakra, right? And you've got a lot of blue energy here actually, because you've got the high priestess as well. So I can see multiple things from this. Again, I'm seeing someone very reserved. I'm seeing someone who doesn't speak up a lot about how they feel, what they want. Um, it's almost like you hold back maybe in conversation. You may not um, say or express your feelings enough or you may tone down your feelings or water down your feelings or the way you express yourself to please the people around you. But as a result of that, people may put you in the box of you're just like everyone else. And because other people are then putting you in that box of you're just like everyone else, you then assume you are just like everyone else when really it's because you're not showing your true colors or you're not showing all of your colors. People are then making assumptions and then you are believing that about yourself, a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So that might be part of your karmic cycle is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, so yeah, communication and the high priestess. I feel like as well, strengthening um, your connection to the 5D may be wise at this time as a way to help you get out of the cycle. There's a very like a um, mind, body, spirit thing going on for your pile where if you just focus on improving one of those areas of yourself, it's gonna naturally impact the others. So if you work on clearing your mind through relaxation techniques, you know, meditation, grounding. If you clear your mind, it's naturally going to have a positive impact on your body and your spirit as well. And notice how you picked bronze, which actually says at the bottom, strengthen your body. So things like exercising, you know, keeping your body healthy, eating the right foods, that is naturally going to clear your mind. It's gonna build your confidence, right? Because you're gonna feel healthy inside of you. And so you're gonna to want to, or you're gonna have more of a desire to put yourself out there in the world because you're gonna be feeling good within yourself, right? So taking care of yourself is definitely gonna be something that's gonna help you break free of this karmic cycle because you're gonna have the confidence to do so. Your mind won't feel as foggy. It won't feel as cluttered with um, ideas or old beliefs that aren't serving you anymore because you will feel calm um, and because your physical health will also, I'm so sorry that's my iPad, it's connected to my phone and anyway, um, so communicating, you know, speaking up more, when you have a certain feeling, when you if you get an intuitive hit about something, if you pick up on something intuitively and you feel the need to tell someone what that is, tell them. Don't be afraid of what other people will think if you um, 
pick up on something spiritually. You know, if you're getting a nudge to tell someone something that you've picked up on, tell them. Um, but also, again, stop hiding yourself away. You're not meant to be hidden away. Stop hiding certain aspects of yourself away that want to be shown. Um, definitely needing to speak up more, speak up more about your feelings. Um, you may want to speak to someone who is spiritual as well. You may want to consider that if you're quite new to this. You may want to speak to a spiritual teacher or mentor, um, someone who can, can um, understand things on a deeper level rather than surface, right? Or if that's a direction that you're wanting to go in because there's a lot of spiritual teacher energy here, right? <laughs> A lot of healing energy if not spiritual then it's healing um, some of you are meant to heal um, you have the capacity to be a very strong healer but i think what's holding you back or limiting this within you right now is the fact that you haven't quite got the balance right in terms of healing yourself and so that has to come first but really this is about your thoughts and your perspective on yourself that is your karmic cycle because you're telling yourself and limiting yourself in so many ways that you're keeping yourself stuck. And because other people are responding to that limited view on your, yourself and who you think you are, it's creating that self-fulfilling prophecy. It's making you think that your beliefs about yourself are true when really people are just responding to what you're presenting to them. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there, but I really hope that was helpful. And I am gonna move on to silver. Okay, yours was really interesting. I feel like I say this in every reading. I'm s <laughs> like a broken record at this point, but it is, <laughs> it really is. Um, okay, so I can see this in two ways. So take this in whichever way it resonates. Um, what is your karmic cycle, first of all? You've got Hawk and you've got the Emperor. Okay. Control. Of some kind is your karmic cycle. Control. It's an issue. It's either an issue within yourself and the way you're perceiving others, the way you're handling or dealing with others, or you feel like you're being controlled by another person. Hawk is all about watching. Hawk, it's like being watched like a hawk or watching like a hawk, right? It's all about watching, observing, from a distance usually, it's, it's, having your eyes on something and trying to get all the facts before you make a move. You may be the type of person who really likes to have all the information before you do anything. Um, and this has become a bit of a karmic cycle for you. Again, this could be someone that you're dealing with. So you may also be around someone who's very controlling or who likes to keep a watchful eye and this is why it's a karmic cycle for you because it's it's unhealthy either way right control is just if done in the wrong way if handled in the wrong way is very unhealthy and that's why it's a karmic cycle for you because if you are the one that likes to keep control who likes to know everything before you take any action um this is this is about you letting go of that and getting into um it's interesting because I'm pretty sure it's at the bottom of this deck. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was. The bottom of the deck, in flow state, if you can see that, right? Which actually says, in the zone, loving life, focused, high frequency, skill meets challenge, flotation therapy. But it's, it's a fountain and it's all about just allowing things to flow the way that they're supposed to, getting into the flow, in the flow state. This could be something that's very... Um, important for you to do in terms of breaking this karmic cycle because again it's really going to depend on whether you're dealing with someone who has this energy or whether you are this person that has that energy but the emperor is someone who 
he is in charge, right? He is the leader. He is some, he's the boss. Some of you, this might actually be a boss and it could be a karmic work situation. But I feel like the problem with this is that there's too much, I need to know everything and I need to know how everything is gonna play out and how everything is gonna go before I do anything, before I take any action. It's living life without having any trust or any faith in things working out in your favor or again, if it's someone that you're dealing with. So it's very restrictive in many ways. It's very restrictive in terms of what you're allowing yourself to have or again, what someone else is allowing you to have. Um, it's very restrictive because you've either got eyes on you that's preventing you from making the moves you'd like to make in your life or you're not allowing yourself to let anyone into your life because you're very distrustful of who comes your way. You don't really believe that people could have good intentions. It's like always looking for the problem, always trying to poke holes in situations that look too good to be true. When really it may just stem from bad experiences of the past that haven't fully been healed. And again, I say this a lot, I have a lot of empathy because we've all had bad experiences and we all know how that can um, make you feel when trying to rebuild, right? It it does change you, it has an impact on you, it, it stops you from jumping in at the deep end a lot of the time because you've done that in the past and it didn't work out so well for you, right? So I do have a lot of empathy for people that can't trust easily because I think we've all been there at certain points in our lives, right? However, again, it's very restrictive and it prevents you from living your life in a way that can fulfill you um, because you're not allowing yourself to have, to just enjoy what's presented to you um, because you're kind of restricting yourself or again, a circumstance in your life is restricting you and making you, it's, it's very rigid. It feels very rigid to me, um, very boxed in, you know, very enclosed. And that's not really fun for, for anyone. Um, <clears throat> don't know why, but I've looked at this number like three times now, the number 27 may be significant to you for whatever reason. Um, so how is this impacting you, this controlling, restrictive, watchful energy? In fact, let me talk about Hawk first, because like I said, it is an energy of being watched or of watching. It says watchful, all seeing messenger of divinity. But when it's out of balance, it says, it says sees too much and suspicious, right? <laughs> So again, you're either dealing with someone that's extremely suspicious, that keeps an eye on everything, that doesn't let anything fall through the cracks that, and that comes across as very controlling then because you don't feel like you can make a move without this person knowing what you're doing because of they don't trust, because they have a lack of faith. Or this is you and you feel like you have to find something wrong with a situation before you can let it into your life almost. Maybe you have a tendency to fall for imperfections rather than perfection. Not that perfect exists because it doesn't. And if you go looking for problems, you'll find them, right? No doubt, you'll find them because humans aren't perfect circumstances aren't perfect. There's always gonna be something you can find wrong. Even if it's the smallest thing, there's always gonna be something you can find wrong. And if that's enough to turn your attention away, then it's gonna turn your attention away, right? However, I feel like you're more likely to fall for imperfection because it's, it's, it's almost like you're more comfortable with that. You're more comfortable with having something be wrong than having something be right. And it's probably because you've had a lot of circumstances in your life that have been wrong, that have been difficult or turbulent in some kind of a way. And so you're kind of used to that energy. So when something presents itself to you that might actually be good and healthy and strong and um, 
more consistent perhaps or calm in some kind of a way you're almost repelled by it because it's like that can't be right i've never had that experience before in my sorry it cut me off so I've never had that experience before in my life. That can't be right. That can't be true. You know, some things that's too good to be true. It can't be real. Um, and so you kind of push it away or you reject it. Now, again, others of you, this is someone else's energy on you. It's almost like someone who's got their claws in you and it's like, ugh, you know, you will do what I say or and this is more of a karmic partnership or um, a karmic relationship in your life. It could be family, you know, it could be romantic, a, really, a, a friendship as well. But either way, whatever it is, I feel like someone's got their claws in you and is keeping a watchful eye over you. They don't want you falling out of line. They don't want you doing things that they're not okay or comfortable with. And in that case, what impact is that having on you? we've got uncomfortable and resentful. I mean, this makes perfect sense to me if this is a person that you're dealing with in your life, because why wouldn't you feel uncomfortable and resentful for being controlled, right? Of course, you're gonna feel that way. Of course, you're gonna feel like you can't relax. Of course, you're gonna feel that you can't just be yourself because what if I take the wrong step? What if I upset this person? What if I make the wrong move or do something that they don't like you know what is that gonna do to my circumstances so yeah i can understand why that would be your reaction it makes sense and we've got indignant offended and bitter bitter so yeah you're gonna feel a bit bitter if someone's kind of overpowering you right if someone's overpowering you of course it's going to make you feel a bit bitter and resentful because someone stealing your power away from your own life right and that's not okay and that's why it's karmic it's teaching you how to empower yourself it's teaching you how to take the reins back in your own life it's teaching you you know how to stand up to i'm hearing authority all of a sudden so <laughs> take that as it resonates um but yeah this is about you reclaiming your power definitely now, if you are the one that is um, trying to control, trying to have all the facts, trying to poke holes in good things, then I feel like, again, uncomfortable makes sense to me because you're gonna be uncomfortable with something that you're not familiar with, right? We're all uncomfortable with things we're not familiar with. And so it makes sense to me that if you're presented with something that doesn't follow the rules, so to speak, or doesn't follow a pattern that you're used to, you're going to be a bit resistant of it, right? You're gonna be a bit closed off to it. Um, <laughs> resentful in that case makes sense because I feel like if you're then, if you're presented with someone that that is as in touch with their power as you are, that's gonna be difficult for you to accept because you may be used to having power over circumstances in your life. You may be used to being the leader and then if you're presented with someone who is also a leader, you're gonna be a bit, <laughs> a bit put off by that. So <clears throat> again, depending on which way this goes for you, I feel like if you are the person that is very comfortable in a leadership position and you like to have control the way you get out of this karmic cycle is by allowing yourself to share the power right with the nine of wands here letting people help you letting people assist you letting people teach you as well as you teach them letting it be more balanced letting it be more equal and fair now if you are the one that's feeling over empowered by other people or by a particular person karmic partners etc you're being asked to stand your ground you're being asked to show your strength to not budge at someone else's will you know to stand your to hold your position right that's what you're being asked to do to hold your position if you feel like you're being over empowered if you feel like you're being controlled or manipulated stand your ground hold your position um 
That's how you break free of the karmic cycle. By not allowing someone to overempower you, by reclaiming your power, because there's something about equality in this particular version of the Nine of Wands for me. You know, these two people have exactly the same stance. Again, for some of you that kind of like control and like power, um, it may be an unconscious thing. So before you kind of go, no, it's not me. <laughs> maybe just sit with it for a minute because sometimes we're unconscious about all of this um i feel like you're you've some of you have met your match some of you have met your match and that's why it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit uncomfortable right it's a bit uncomfortable to be met with that because you're so used to having maybe relationships like this whether you're the person being over over empowered or you're the person who likes to overpower right? Either way, the power dynamics between people in your life has always been imbalanced. And so at the minute, it feels like you're being met with a match of some kind. And it's almost like it's making you feel uncomfortable and kind of, yeah, it's not sitting right with you at this point in time. And I think that that's just because you're not used to it. This, yeah, it's almost like equality is trying to come into your life, but you keep pushing it away or rejecting it because you may be used to imbalance. And so you don't know how to embrace something a bit healthier. Now, you've got regret here as well. Interesting energy for how to break free of a karmic cycle. Some of you, again, you're afraid of making a wrong choice, so you don't make choices. You don't take action because you're afraid that you'll put, you know, you'll make the wrong move and it will end in disaster. You're poking holes in a plan before you've actually turned that plan into an action. <laughs> it's almost like some of you, again, need to get used to making mistakes or be comfortable with making mistakes sometimes because it's a part of life. You know, it's what happens. It's That is part of karma. Karma is there to... Um, show us that there's lessons to be learned from the mistakes that we make. So some of you need to get into this energy of it's okay if I make the wrong choice sometimes, it's okay if I make the wrong decision, it's okay if I put a foot wrong sometimes because I'm going to learn from it. As long as I learn from it, as long as I take something away from it, then it wasn't a waste. It wasn't something that I should sit with regret over, you know? It's something that I was supposed to do because it's transforming me. It's helping me understand how to do better next time. So I feel like some of you, you may be afraid to leave your comfort zone. I'm seeing that as well. That was a bit similar to bronze pile you're afraid to leave your comfort zone because st stepping into the unknown means or might mean to you that you're losing a sense of control or a sense of power um, because at least if you stay in a karmic cycle you know what's coming it's predictable to you whereas if you leave that and you move into another one a new one something something different that's going to provide you with a new experience well I'm not used to this I don't I can't predict what's going to happen here therefore that makes me feel uncomfortable and I can't I don't think I'm capable I don't think I'm ready so I'm just going to pull one more clarifier for how you break free of this but I feel like you break free of this karmic cycle by either a reclaiming your power from someone who's tried to take it away from you or has successfully taken it away from you multiple times and has kept you in this karmic cycle by keeping a watchful eye over you trying to manipulate the decisions that you make or b you you allow someone to share the power you allow someone to teach you you allow yourself to meet your match you don't try and push people away who are on the same level as you
Yeah, definitely something about walking away. <laughs> Something about walking away from, again, people that try to control your every move, right? People that try to manipulate your decisions in some sort of a way. Be brave and bold enough to make your own choices, regardless of the reactions of other people. Yeah. Some of you, this is about being controlled, definitely. I would say there's probably more people who are going through this dynamic of being perhaps in a family situation or a partnership with someone who has tried to control you and it's not fulfilling you emotionally. And why would it? Why would it fulfill you emotionally if your every decision is being made for you? If you're being told what to think, what to feel, what to do, who to be, how to present yourself in the world, you know, that's no fun for anyone. So some of you are definitely in that kind of circumstance. And again, it could be family, it could be a relationship, but look at this, look at the bird. You need to set yourself free. The hawk, you need to set yourself free. You need to stop. It's almost like observing and planning will only get you so far. You're gonna have to take that leap at some point. You're gonna have to take that jump to where you want to be and trust that it will work out for you because you'll be honoring yourself by trusting your instincts. But definitely standing your ground against people you try to control you, but also allowing people in, learning how to trust that things aren't always too good to be true. Things aren't always going to end in a certain way because that's what you've experienced in the past. Releasing some of that control and allowing yourself to just be in the flow. Okay, so I am going to move on to gold pile. So if you chose gold pile, what is your comic cycle? And how do you get out of it? Okay, so where Okay, so yours had a similarity to silver pile. Um definitely something about power and control. This seems to be a repetitive theme. Um yours feels like a lack of action though much more about a lack of action i feel like um you got golden egg right how interesting as well the synchronicities there you got gold you picked gold for a reason and i feel like you may have a tendency to miss out on golden opportunities because you're playing it safe or golden ideas that you have that you're not acting upon because you're playing it safe, right? See how this is this is an egg that's that's in a nest. It's being protected by the nest around it, right? So it feels to me that you are protecting your ideas, but almost to a point where you're not allowing yourself to move forward with these ideas and to make these ideas into something real, to something tangible. Um, which is ba basically means that you're missing out. It basically means that you are you are you're not allowing yourself to flourish, which again is a bit similar to bronze pile. This might be a combination of both piles actually, because I can see both energies playing out here. But I feel like you you're either being again there's this feeling of being enclosed right so you may have particularly i want to say for this pile of family members you may have family members that are kind of doing this to you they're kind of keeping you in this cocoon they're keeping you in this in this place that they feel keeps you safe or they on some maybe unconscious level they don't want you to bloom into what you have the potential to become because if you do that, they may lose what they gain from you. They may lose, um, you know, empty nest syndrome, of course. Empty nest syndrome. So some of you, this is definitely a family situation 
where some of you maybe have a parent or parents that are a bit clingy or a bit controlling, a bit domineering over you. They don't want to lose you to other circumstances in your life. They don't want to see you. You might be in your 50s as well. <laughs> I doubt it. But for those of you that this particular message resonates for, you know, it doesn't matter what age you, you are at. You may just have parents that really have always struggled to let you go or have struggled to, you know, release their, the impact that they have on you or release the control that they have over you. They've never really been able to let you be your own person. I feel like that is definitely for some of you. Um, they like keeping you in a box or they like keeping you know, your shine under control. And I think it's just because they feel if they let you have free reign that they'll lose you for good, that you'll forget about them or that, you know, you might be able to achieve something that they weren't able to achieve. So, okay, only for a small portion of you, please don't all take this on board and start labeling your family members. I'm not diagnosing anyone here, but there's a possibility that some of you are dealing with a narcissist or a narcissistic parent. It's possible that that's happening. And it's this, if, if not a narcissist, it's just someone who is struggling to release control over their child or release control over the decisions that you make for your life because of the potential that you have You've got strength in reverse, right? So again, karmic cycle, you currently don't have your power. You've handed it to someone else or someone else has hold of your power. Some of you maybe has something over you or they have a way to manipulate. Again, very similar to silver pile. Um, they have a way to manipulate you or pull the strings in some kind of a way. I'm hearing someone who knows how to push your buttons so someone may know what sets you off and they use that a lot to keep control because you also got camel i clarified and got camel and camel is about self-reliance right which is interesting because i feel like this is something that you're wanting it's something that you need in your life but something that you may have always struggled to have fully because you've always had people around you who have been pulling the strings over your life so camel when out of balance it says dehydrated and lacks vitality so yeah i feel like some of you <laughs> some of you play into this as well again it's probably unconscious if that's the case if you have parents family members people in your life who have created a safe nest for you or who have um who do kind of pull the strings over your life slightly, you may have become comfortable with that. You may have actually become comfortable with knowing that those people are there, that they kind of make decisions for you. It means that you don't have to make them for yourself. It means that you don't have to rely on yourself for everything, every choice that you make in your life, every decision that you make, because you've got other people who are very kind of overpowering making those decisions for you and it takes that weight off of your shoulders slightly i feel like you i'm yeah i'm definitely talking to some people who kind of go with the flow but too much you d you might do it too much it's almost like you don't actually have your power as a result of going with the flow of what other people want for you or want from you and you're the golden egg. I feel like you are the golden egg. Or you have these kinds of ideas that could become something incredible. But because you have kind of given your power away or you have a tendency to give your power away, other people are kind of not allowing you to see your own shine or not allowing you to see what you're truly made of because they like having the power over you. And if you suddenly become self-reliant, you won't need those people anymore. You won't need to depend on them anymore for whatever it is that you get from them. Um, yeah, because how is this impacting you? Non-action. It's making you stay put. It's making, it's making, it's almost like other people 
are just telling you where to be, what to do, who to become, and you're just going, okay, like a nodding dog, you know, like, okay. It's almost, like, again, there's a lack of power. Self-empowerment is really needed for you guys because we've also got desperate here, right? Now, I don't think desperate is the right word. I think out of control, which is what it says at the bottom. Out of control is, is more appropriate because I think that that's, again, the, there's a, an imbalance in terms of power and um, control here. Someone has control over your life. Okay, I'm getting a specific example here. Take it as it resonates. Some of you may live with parents or you may live with family members or you may live with someone who is providing you with a roof over your head and because oh oh I, you know what i really hate this if this is true it's emotional blackmail i feel like some of you are dealing with people who exercise emotional blackmail and what do i mean by that i mean people who do something nice for you and then when you don't do what they want you to do, when you don't fall in line, they make you feel bad by guilt tripping you because they did that one nice thing for you. So let's say for example, you live in someone else's house and they pay, pay the bills because money's tight right now. And then you decide that you want to go out and do something, but that person doesn't want you to go out and do whatever it is that you're gonna do. And so they say, I've provided you with this roof over your head. You know, I pay the bills. You need to do what I tell you to do because of that. That's not a healthy dynamic, right? If someone's doing something like that to you, that's not a healthy dynamic. And um, that's emotional blackmail. So pay attention to that if that's something that's happening to you. Again, I feel like some of you have gotten so used to handing your power over to other people in your life that you let people make decisions for you as a result of that. Um, because there's some sort of dependency here. You may be very dependent upon someone, again, maybe financially, materially, right, with that nest energy. You may be, um, you may be dependent upon, upon others and it's for some sort of material stability. If it's not that way around, flip it. It could be the other way around. But I feel like for some of you, it's going to be that way that you don't have your own power. And there's something about being comfortable with that right now, even though it's not a healthy dynamic. There's something that's comfortable about you depending on these people for whatever it is that you get from them rather than relying on yourself. You've become comfortable with that fact. Um, <clears throat> I also feel like there's a lot of disrespect involved as a result of this because the problem is is that when a dynamic is imbalanced when one person has power over another that person can often disrespect you even if they don't mean to they can because they have the power right there's a there's a lack of balance between the power a dynamic between the two of you and therefore one person feels like they can treat the other in a certain way and you see that everywhere right you could think of a thousand examples where that's the case now that's a problem because disrespect is never acceptable right it's never okay it's never healthy now in terms of what you need to do in order to break free of this we've got the three of pentacles this makes sense to me because i think some of you need to build your own foundation so again if you are dependent upon someone there's a need for you to become more self-reliant more dependent upon yourself so that you can break free of any control that someone else has over you or other people have over you as a result of what they are currently providing for you if you become more self-reliant if you become um someone who's building their own solid foundation and you've got that and that is yours and it's not something that someone else can take away from you then other people won't be able to have control over you but not only that we've got admired right people will start to respect you more because you'll be holding your own right so if you're currently upset about the lack of respect you're receiving from other people 
it's because potentially they have power over you because of what they're providing for you. If you actually become more self-reliant, you take care of yourself, you build up your own foundation, um, other people will start to receive. It won't be something that they'll consciously do necessarily. It's probably more gonna be an unconscious exchange that's energetic because you will have started to respect yourself more. You will have started to become more self-reliant, more confident, more than likely as a result, the energy exchange will suddenly shift. So you're being asked to find a way. It may take some time. No one's asking you to get this sorted by tomorrow. Again, given the circumstances as well, there's a lot of people that have had to depend on other people because of they've had no choice. And, you know, it's just been circumstantial. It's just been because of what's happened around the world. However, if you can take the steps, because we do have non-action, so there is something that's kind of suggesting here that more action is needed on your part to free yourself from this, this um, dependency. Um, I feel like some of you need to take the steps, the necessary steps in order to build your own foundation for yourself so that no one can then use your current foundation as a way to manipulate you and to tell you what to do. Um, basically, to put, it, put all of this in basic terms, you need your independence. You need more independence in your life from certain people that you, that seem to be using a certain a certain structure, foundation, dependency issue against you. Again, maybe unconscious, but I do feel like there is there's something that is out of control in terms of dynamics in your life because of how dependent you are or need to be on them right now because of something that they are providing you that you haven't been able to provide for yourself, that you are being asked to start providing for yourself. And I do feel like it's based in the material world as well. I feel like it's um, it's financial or it's um, to do with a home environment. Wow, this came out in silver, four of cups, four, right? Four is about, yeah, wow, the tower as well. Yeah, you need out, you need out of a situation um, because something was built on something unstable anyway. Something's out of balance, it's out of whack, right? Um, and it's unfulfilling for you as a result of that because you don't feel like you have complete control over your circumstances, which is not acceptable. And even, okay, let me just say this because I see it all the time and it, I find it kind of triggering, I guess, for me. It, it's one of my triggers, but if someone chooses to do something nice for you, that is a choice that they are making, right? And they have to take accountability for that choice. It's not okay for someone to do something nice for you and then to use that as a way to control you and manipulate you. It's not something that they can then hold above your head, right? It's not something that they can hold against you and keep coming back to, especially if it was something that they did years and years ago. <laughs> Remember that one nice thing that I did for you five years ago? Well, you owe me still five years later, you know? It's not okay for people to behave in that way. And I feel like some of you are definitely in a situation like that where there's people who are using the nice things that they do for you to guilt trip you into behaving in a certain way or to doing things for them, you know? emotional blackmail and it's not okay. Um, so I really feel like you need your own foundation, something that you've built for yourself um, that other people can't interfere with, other people can't use as a way to control you. So yeah, interesting, okay. Oh, oh God. Okay, seven, that was the Seven of Swords. I'm not going to go down and get it, but it's the Seven of Swords, which is the card of, you know, again, we've got the, it came out after the Nine of Cups. 
Nine of Cups, Seven of Swords can be quite selfish en energies if, um, if not balanced out in the right way. And then we've got the Queen of Cups and we've got Justice here. So Justice is about balance, right? It's about balance and it's also about karma. So, <clears throat> so I feel like Yeah, okay. Look at this dynamic. Do I even need to say anything? The people that you could be dealing with are like this person here, right? Like, I am justice. I have done something so nice for you and now you need to bow down to me because I've done this nice thing for you, right? Again, look at this. I've given you one of my cups even though I have so many to give, I've given you one of my cups and therefore you now need to cater to me. And if you don't cater to me, I'm going to use that one nice thing that I've done for you against you. This is a massive, this is a power, someone's on a power trip. Someone's on a power trip. Someone is controlling, manipulative, domineering. Someone is holding the nice things that they do for you against you and it's unhealthy and this is the karmic cycle that needs to break in your life by you finding your own independence if you can't do it today because that's unlikely there's obviously a reason why you've been kind of tied to this uh, circumstance this situation take steps that you can take today towards making that happen take more action in gaining your independence away from these types of people that make you feel guilty for living your own life, right? Living your own life, wanting to do things your own way and be your own person and not wanting to be controlled, right? Very normal things, very normal way of looking at yourself and your life is to want to be free and to do things your own way. But a lot of people do have an issue with control and do have an issue with um, letting go as well. So work on your independence, work on taking those steps to find your independence and to build your own foundation because that's how you're going to break this karmic cycle and that's how you're going to gain respect from the people that are currently disrespecting you, which may not be people you even want respect from anymore. However, it will naturally shift as a result of you doing things for yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there guys, but I really hope that was helpful. Um, I hope you all have a good day and I will speak to you soon, bye.